So guys, we've been taking apart a bunch of game consoles and computers and stuff. I thought we would go with a phone as well, just to be a little different. And this is the Galaxy S5. And you may be asking why we're we taking apart kind of an older phone at this point. Um, to some, it may not be older because it's still a pretty capable phone overall. I mean, it's heart rate sensor. And the big thing that is interesting to me and maybe others is the fact that it was Samsung's really first big advertised phone that is, in their minds, water resistant, but kind of shares similarities with something that's closer to being waterproof, since it is rated to be dipped in water up to three meters for what they say 30 minutes, although there's a lot of YouTube videos right now that are showing that it can be in water for up to an hour with no issues, even going through washing machines and stuff like that. So this phone overall is done pretty well for being water resistant. And it was very interesting to me when I first had to work on one of these, how they achieved that because generally phones still have ports you have to plug into and of course it's plastic. So how would they keep water out so easily? Well, we're gonna take a look at that. And I also wanna say, this is one of the most feared repairs uh, that are done by repair technicians. In fact, for a while there, we made the conscious decision at a lot of the places I worked to fix these to turn them away unless it was the screen that was broken because more times than not, you were gonna break this screen just trying to get to the motherboard. So if you wanna stick around and check that out, this would be really fun. So let's see if I can keep this screen alive. Also, before I get started, I wanna have a big shout out to Eugster, Y-U-G-S-T-E-R. Very cool people for providing this for this reason, specifically to take it apart and check out the internals. Um, just helped us make a video here. So I, I really appreciate it. Head on over to their, their website and check it out. They got this out to me in like two or three days after they said they were sending it. So it was very quick, came in a box accessories came with it like uh, it came with the the full charger manuals and everything and this one looks perfect so i don't know if if it was supposed to be new or if they're refurbished but this one still has as you can see the original sticker that kind of comes on it when you take it out of the box so awesome job at eugster i appreciate it and like i said guys link will be in the description um, for their website it everything's checks out there with me i got this really quickly so check them out as well if you're looking for any electronics or other needs as well so of course the big question is how did they make this device what essentially is waterproof very close to it anyway well the first step was to of course make sure the battery compartment was sealed which they did that's not a problem to get to because remember they do advertise as having a removable battery but the biggest problem with phones is that there is seepage around the screen and you have to do everything you can from keeping water going through the front so what do they do they seal the screen down. Usually you can actually get to the back of a phone, whether it's a motherboard, you can take the back off, unscrew the back, everything comes off, you can leave the screen how it is. In this case though, the screen has to come off before you can get to the motherboard. And this is sealed down tight. And they have to do that because if any water gets around the edges into it, then you have a problem obviously. So what has to happen is you have to peel the screen up, which is easy to break while keeping in mind that there are ribbon cables and other things underneath. That's why a lot of places do not repair these if they don't have to, because these screens, when they first came out, were almost $200. So if you break this for a customer when they bring it in for a charge port replacement, which charge ports are like 15 bucks, so it's not a big deal, and you break their screen, now you have a problem with that customer. So that's why we didn't do them for the longest time. Screens are cheaper now, but still not cheap. So. Let's go through this and get to the motherboard, take a look and see what we can figure out inside and hopefully get the screen up without breaking it. If it breaks, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, this was sent specifically to take apart and show the motherboard off and talk about the technology in it. So you know what? Let's just take a shot. So the first step about this is pretty straightforward. The back just pops off. It's not like anything crazy. Um, what's really cool though about this is they did use almost like rubber gaskets here that when pressure is placed against it would help from like water getting in there because when you push this on, really it can't have any water seeping in because the battery again is right here. That's a big no-no for water. And then obviously you can get to the circuit board from here. So this back was designed to keep water out. The camera is also sealed, so that's why it doesn't really need it around here. Um, but really it's not a bad idea and it seems to work. So uh, the rubber gasket on the back is a good idea. Battery comes out. This is, let's say on the back here, okay, 10.78 10 watt hours, 4.4 volts can go through it to charge. That makes it a 2,800 milliamp hour battery, not bad. And the nice thing about this is we can at least take a few screws out from the back very quickly. Um, these bottom ones come off and then there is, I believe at least one here. So let's take a few of these screws up, just get them moving. And that's pretty much all we can do on the back. There's really not much else 
to it. I did go ahead and pop this up. If I remember correctly, I think that is for the home button down here. Um, it plugs in through there. I just popped that off. Just might as well unplug it now while I can. And here we go. This is where we have to actually attack the screen. And this is the part everyone hates. Again, this is why nobody wants to do this. Um, I'm just going to peel this off because we don't really need that, obviously, and it'll get in the way. Um, so here's our screen. And the best way to do this, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but this is the best way we've found for it to work. You want to use a heat gun, of course, to loosen the glue like we've done in the past for other things. And then you want to use something soft. You don't want to use like a piece of metal to pop it up. Some people will use like blades. Eh, blades are still pretty dangerous with that. Um, they work to get started. We decided to start using playing cards. Yes, playing cards work well because they are sharp enough on the edge to cut through glue, but they are soft enough to where the glass will actually cut up the card instead of the glass cracking. So as long as you're careful and take your time, that's the big key here, guys. You gotta take your time. It's not gonna be a quick process. So I'm going to heat this, start cutting around with the cards, and I'll fast forward this as much as possible because it's gonna be a little while. So I pull, I got the screen up and everything, of course, you just saw that, uh, and I guess the big question on people's minds is, does <laughs> the screen still work after being manhandled the way it was? I just plugged it on the bottom, I didn't plug in the home button yet or anything, um, but I guess it's a good idea to check before I go any further and know if I managed to damage the screen. I don't think I did, because it's a pretty clean pull overall, I mean, it looks good on the other side, so I'm going to pop that in, we'll hold this home button down, and hopefully it still works. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks fine. So the screen is still good, which is great. Like I said, it's a pretty clean pull on the other side. So I figured after it popped off, uh, I had a little spot down at the bottom that I was struggling with a little bit. It ended up being uh, the bottom part was really stuck. So uh, it was really mostly the copper shielding that was holding it down. And uh, yeah, there we go. Everything looks good. Good news there. So let's, uh, let's get this guy back off and move on from there. Now, here's the thing, uh, even though it was a very clean pull, as you can see, uh, it still will not be, it won't be waterproof anymore um, or water resistant because that copper tape on the bottom is what sealed everything. And I basically cut underneath of it to get this up. So this phone is no longer water resistant as it was from the factory. If you take any of your phones that are like water resistant phones or waterproof even, they will not be the same when they come back from somebody if you're repairing them at a shop or wherever. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Um, so, but at least you know now, uh, don't expect it to be dunked in a pool after you get like a screen replaced or something. So we have a bunch of screws here to go through. So let's go through these screens, and, or let's go, I'm sorry, let's, screws. let's go through these screws and uh, get the motherboard out.
All right, so the board is out technically. Again, this is, again, a step how they managed to make this thing water resistant. Again, I keep wanting to say waterproof because it technically sits underneath water for so long, but this is how they did it. They, you can see how they section things off to help with stopping water get in. We have that. I had to clip the entire thing out and the board is still down here to the back. Now this is where your charge port is here. It is like a USB three charge port. Um, you have a, uh, this one's the Verizon model. I think the AT&T or T-Mobile one have an extra antenna running down here. So you can see through here, you have like a white and a blue. Uh, you have a couple things uh, there. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, of course, is located down here as well, right there. And then you also have your cellular antenna cable also. So you have a couple cables there for those different things. Um, up here, of course, SIM card slot, micro SIM. The motor is here. What they do is there's a little guy here that sticks. It makes contact with the board. And it, of course, rumbles whenever you move it, whenever you need it to, like, receive a call or something. Back antenna, front antennas, or back camera, front cameras up here. And let's pull the board out and get a look at the processor. And uh, should, I think that'll pretty much do it here for that. But let's, um, let's pop this guy out. Uh, I don't think it's held in by too much at this point because again, it's encased really well from the start. So let's just double check. You always wanna check for screws, guys, if you're working on something and you're not 100% sure. Um, you wanna check a couple times because you can see there's one hiding right in the middle there. Usually Samsung phones, when you get to the board, there's only like two or three screws that even hold the thing down, if that. Sometimes, like this case, one screw. So this kind of pulls up. Now, for some reason, they hide the, uh, again, this might be for water, uh, water resistant type measures. Um, they hide the charge port cable underneath. So you have to kind of like lift it up like that, and now it's free. So this is the entire center part. Here is the motherboard. Now, the camera's still attached. I don't really care about that. Uh, but we have metal shields here to help with heat, for example. And then here is one large chip right here. Let's take a look at what this guy is. So I took a minute to look up some of these chips. We have our Helix chip here, which should be the RAM. Now this thing has two gigabytes of RAM uh, built onto the motherboard. It has a system on a chip ARM processor here as well. Now the ARM processor itself is, should be a quad core. Let me look up the exact, I guess, uh, ARM processor that's in there real quick with the GPU built in as well. It should be a it should be a Snapdragon though, I believe. Um, let me just double check what we have in here. Yes, it is using a Snapdragon 801 processor. It's quad core. And generally the 801s are around two gigahertz, which is good. And then of course we have our two gigabytes of RAM. And this one is, like I said, a Verizon one. So it has certain bands that T-Mobile one doesn't or vice versa. And uh, overall, I mean, this is the entire motherboard of the, of, the, of the cell phone. That's the interesting thing about cell phones is because of the way the system on a chip with ARM works, you can make cell phone boards pretty small. And in this case, like I said, Samsung opted to start their little generation of making the phones as resistant to water as possible, starting with the S5, but they did some really frustrating things here. Now, the, from what I remember, the S6, which I've had to work on as well, did not incorporate this same means. Now, the way I got to these, by the way, is they're little metal shields. You can peel them off with your, um, with your fingernail. So they just pop off on the sides. You can look at the chips if you want, and you put them back on. Now, this is not a phone I would take lightly when it comes to repairing. A lot of people like to look stuff up on YouTube and try to do it. This is not one of those phones, mostly because of this screen. <laughs> this screen is in no way uh, repair friendly at all. You can see under here, I had to get underneath this, this uh, copper sticker without damaging this cable or this cable the entire time I cannot see. And then of course, on the bottom of that main frame, the mid frame that I showed you that everything sat on, you have two buttons at the bottom here that are touch and they're ribbon as well. Every ribbon cable can be cut by accident and then something on the phone doesn't work, whether it's the back button or the settings button, or in this case, your top screen, your screen completely if you cut this guy, or this is your digitizer cable. So this is what allows the touch function to work. This is your screen cable. Your home button on this is interesting. They opted for an actual press home button here. Um, I said this because I'm used to, uh, I was used to working on a different phone earlier, which was another Samsung phone, um, but they did a different thing where they had it plug in. This is a push button one and it actually sits as part of the charge board. So if you have to replace charge board, you can also replace the home button as well if you want, or if one stops working, you can replace the other. So these are all, this whole display is vulnerable the entire time you're cutting it up. The reason I use playing cards is because there is less of a chance to actually cut into the cable. As you could see, everything works fine. This 
screen actually came up much easier than usual, which is awesome. Um, and it is a factory screen, I can tell just by looking at it. So this is uh, good overall. Eukster did provide me with all original parts from what I could see. This, is these, this one in particular is not a recycled screen, like you know where places will buy a broken phone, a broken screen with a broken screen and then fix it and then resell it as refurbished. From what I can tell, this is an original Samsung screen. So this phone was never opened. Um, even if they sell it as refurbished, this one was never opened because I can tell when you pop them open um, if it is. So good place to buy, apparently. They're not selling cheap, junky parts on it, which is great. But uh, yes, guys, the S5 is an interesting phone for its being water resistant. Again, water resistant, I should say waterproof. Uh, and overall, interesting phone, not one I'd recommend repairing yourself. Take it to somebody specialized or in this case, buy another one since this one on Eukster, I believe goes for $125, which for a cell phone out of contract is pretty good. So, and S5 is still of course capable overall. It's a very good phone. So uh, with that guys, I hope you enjoyed a quick look at one of the harder repairs for cell phones. This is not an easy repair for cell phones. Obviously you can see all the parts that start to pile up and screws and, and Easy things to break. This screen when it first came out was 200. I think right about now it's under 100 now just for the screen. So not a bad buy at Eukster. Thank you as always to Eukster for helping us out here and providing something that I may have ended up breaking. <laughs> uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you watching and I will see you guys next time when we take something else apart.